This seems to be quite a move by the Chief Justice. Is this unprecedented? Have we ever seen anything like this before? Indeed, it is unprecedented, but not unexpected. Uh, we knew that uh, the country was supposed to have enacted this law uh, more than 10 years, uh, about 10 years ago, but it has taken this long. It has taken six petitions, and the Chief Justice says it is a painful decision, but it must be taken. He says the Parliament has refused to be able to take this decision. Um, and he says there is no other way. If a country cannot respect the laws that it writes itself, then it the parliament stands dissolved because its work is to make laws. What's been the general reaction by the public? You said six petitions. That means there must be a lot of support from some quarters. Indeed, there is support because there have been four attempts inside Parliament, all of which have failed. Indeed, the last one in February last year when uh, President Kenyatta and his deputy, William Ruto, including the opposition leader, Raila Odinga, marshaled their troops uh, to come uh, to Parliament and uh, be able to pass this law, uh, members of Parliament failed to turn up and so there was no quorum uh, for parliament to be able to pass this law. That was the last attempt. Uh, since then, President Kenyatta has been quiet, uh, the deputy president has been quiet, the opposition leader has been quiet. And so today, uh, people who have sent those petitions to court, uh, a lot of them women uh, activists, uh, lawyers, the Law Society of Kenya, a group calling itself, we are 52 percent, meaning that the country has 52 percent of the population as we women are saying that this is the right thing to do. Uh, the Chief Justice may have taken too long, but finally he has taken the right decision. However, there are those, uh, especially members of Parliament, who feel that the Chief Justice is continuing with the wars that have been seen between the executive and the judiciary. And so they're saying that, uh, one, the country is in the middle of a, uh, the coronavirus pandemic. Uh, there is no money. And so they said this is the wrong time for him to have done it. And by the way, the chief justice is going on terminal leave ahead of his retirement. So they're also feeling like this is his last uh, knockout to the executive, which has been, uh, uh, you know, in a, in a wrangle with the judiciary all this time. So uh, very mixed reactions. But a lot of Kenyans saying it is time to teach members of parliament a lesson. How it goes from here, we will see. Has the president reacted to uh, this advice that he's gotten from the uh, Chief Justice? Now, the president is quiet. He has been having meetings. He is at the coast of Kenya in uh, Mombasa, where he has been having meetings uh, uh, with various committees around COVID-19. This evening, the, they released, uh, the State House released a statement indicating that uh, the president had extended uh, the ongoing curfew in the country until Tuesday next week. But there was no mention of what happened today uh, in the judiciary. So we are waiting to see whether when he addresses uh, parliament, uh, when he addresses the nation on Tuesday next week, he will speak or whether he will speak earlier than that. But the executive and the judiciary in the country uh, have been at uh, loggerheads since uh, this same uh, court led by uh, Justice Maraga threw out President Uhuru Kenyatta's uh, election victory last uh, during the last election, uh, having to send the country back uh, to the ballot. And so since then, President Kenyatta and uh, David Maraga have not been working together in harmony. And so uh, probably Probably President Kenyatta will be seeing this as a continuation of that. Do we know why there's been such lethargy in trying to get this law enacted? It almost sounds like resistance, actually. It is some form of resistance. One cannot understand why, because they, nowhere does the law say that it is favoring women. Indeed, all it says that at any given time, none of the genders in parliament should be more than two thirds the representation. So for some reason, because women have to, uh, you know, uh, never have the level playing field when it goes uh, to elections, the women are always the ones who are disadvantaged. In the last parliament, there were uh, 
18 members of parliament, uh, no, 11 members of parliament, and in this parliament there are 18. So you see, uh, very few, uh, only 23% of the members of parliament are women. Now the arguments have been that it will be expensive to be able uh, to nominate uh, women to fill these slots that are missing, but the women uh, under this umbrella body called We Are 52% have been able to show that every woman who is nominated to fill these gaps will only earn 58 shillings more. That is a uh uh, just over half a dollar. So they're saying uh, money should not be the reason. Others are saying um, it will be the parliament will be too bloated. And people are asking if it is not bloated now, what are the men who are in parliament doing? So it it seems to be uh, mainly a war between the women and the men. Indeed, uh, last year, uh, just before the February uh, uh, vote that I, I spoke about earlier, we saw women wearing white, women members of parliament wearing white and trying to march into parliament. And the chief just, the, the, the speaker of the National Assembly was very harsh to them, saying whether you wear white dresses or do what, that will not change the situation. You must come in and vote and you yourselves must go out to the field during elections and seek votes. It's a tough one, but I mean, I, I suppose part of this would be you're asking parliamentarians to vote for a law that might mean some of them will be out of a job. And we know how well uh, Kenyan parliamentarians are paid. Indeed, and uh, you know, um, the crafters of this law actually uh, saw it, and uh, I, I guess they knew that it would be a difficult law to pass. And so there is a clause in that law that says, should members of parliament not enact a law that will make it possible for the, two, for the two, uh, third gender principle to take effect, then parliament must stand dissolved. And this is where we are now. Now, whether President Kenyatta would dissolve parliament and cut his thumb short, because if he uh, cuts, uh, if he calls, uh, dissolves parliament now, it means he will cut short his final term by two years. Uh, then the country must go into another election in 60 days. So it is complicated. And, it, and like you say, um, I do not see any member of parliament supporting a move to send them to the ballot prematurely.